Last week, DevOps has some kind of a problem. So again, we let's start the manufacturing industries. <clears throat> manufacturing industries 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 basically as a it is a place where raw material transform into the finished goods as we discussing in a previous class raw material transform into the finished goods the process of changing the primary raw materials into more usable and valuable products by utilizing machines and human skill is called a manufacturing. It is called as the manufacturing. The products obtained to the, those products which are obtained to the such manufacturing processes are categorized under the secondary sector activities like sugar, textiles, shoe, furniture, rubber, rubber tires, automobiles, paper, railways, etc. Manufacturing industries are generally contributing in a growth of economies. Those economies of a world which are emphasizing over a secondary sector activities, these are as the more developed as compared to the, those economies which are emphasizing over a primary sector activities. For In relation to this, we discuss as a, one of the example as a Japan, which is as an industrial giant in all over the world, uh, who is a virtually poor in a natural resources. Natural resources are not available in a Japan, neither as a minerals are available here. And as per the island location in Japan, there is agriculture, it's not possible. But still, as a Japan is a developed nation at present. It's a fast, it's it's uh, it's having as a one of the fastest growing economies dependent on others. For a raw material, Japan has dependent upon a India and a other Asian and African countries. In previous chapter, we discussed as a India 60% of iron ore exported towards the Japan to the Vishakhapatnam port. So raw material as purchased by the Japan from India and afterwards the manufactured goods selling towards the India at a higher cost. If, if we start to use a such raw material which has produced in our country, within a country, through which we can earn as a more profit margin comparatively the export of a raw material. By the import of a manufacturing goods in our country, we are uh, losing a valuable wealth. That wealth which can be as, uh, utilized for the other purposes. With the growth of our manufacturing industries, job opportunities, it will be as a improved in our country. Manufacturing or industrialization, it is as the basis of a country's economy, prosperous economies of a world, they are dependent upon the diversified forms of a industrial units. Why? Because the industries are providing as a more job opportunities. Industries providing as a more job opportunities, high living standard, improvements in a per capita income, increase in a per capita income, better choices for their consumers. Industries are giving as the more choices to the consumers, choices to consumers. It increases as the industries, they help as to increase the national income increase in national income. So all these are the significant uh, matters related to the location of industries, those industries which are located in a such countries where the poverty as a unemployment has not existed. With growth of uh, industries, poverty, it can be as a easily eradicate and a status of uh, unemployment, it can be as a deprived, it can be as a removed. In this age of a uh, globalization, Presently, as a complete world as becoming as a global village. Due to as a concept of a globalization in which a different economies of a world which are interconnected. Presently, as an open market system is there. Open market system in which all the countries are interdependent on each other. India known for the agriculture goods. Such goods are exporting towards America, 
towards the other Asian African countries and Gulf countries. In such avers, India importing as the uranium thorium directly from the US towards India, oil from the Gulf countries towards Asia India, and manufactured goods from a Central Asia. Manufactured goods from Central Asia towards India, we are importing. So all economies are the interdependent without the use of other resources existed in other countries. Developmental goals, they can't be as achieved in a present scenario. Clear? So this was as related with that chapter. Let's start our chapter, manufacturing industries. Industry is a place where raw material transform into finished goods through the manufacturing processes. Manufacturing are the those processes which are used the raw material into the other forms of a goods, other forms of goods. The example we discuss as in a cotton textiles, gaining process is a part of a manufacturing, manufacturing processes in which co uh, cotton seeds separated from the cotton balls. Afterwards, the gaining, the spinning work is going on, spinning to the weaving, then dyeing, then afterwards as a cutting, stitching, and afterwards as a a shirt which has ready for ready in a market for a consumption, which, which can be as a buy by, by the consumer to satisfy their needs. Clear? To satisfy their needs. So different number of industries are located in our country. Such industries are influenced by the factors, locational factors. Industries are generally affected by the two types of locational factors, geographical factors, geographical factors and non-geographical factors. Geographical factors and non-geographical factors. Non-geographical factors. Geographical factors and non-geographical factors. Geographical factors includes as a land, labor, land, labor, land, labor, water, supply of water, markets, raw material, raw material, power supply, means of transport, means of transport, climate, climate, land, labor, water, market, raw material, power, transport, climate, and a non-geographical, non-geographical, non-geographical as capital investment, capital investment, capital investment, government policies, government policies, government policies. So these are the collectively responsible for a location of a different industries in a different parts of a country, in different parts of a country. First land, for industries, a larger extensive area require, extensive area is required for the location of industries, for which as a industries are needed to locate in a mountainous regions. In mountainous regions, the cost of production, it will be as a higher to as a means of transport, the transportation of a goods towards the upper altitudinal areas. This is not as an easy task. So for which as industries are required as a leveled areas and preferably as the less fertile lands. Less fertile lands. Fertile lands are not used for a location of industries because once laying the industries, it can be as a work for the more than a 20, 30, 50, 40 years. So Preferably as uh, industries are located in a such areas which are as the less fertile. Clear? Land required for the location of industries. Second as a labor. 
in industries a different kinds of workers skilled unskilled workers are required for the production activities for manufacturing activities labor for example when we talking about the iron and steel industries labor required unskilled labor required in a unskilled labor required for a mining processes and skilled labor required for the running of a machines so different industries require as a labor so for which as a most number of industries are located in such parts where population density is a higher areas consisting as a high density of a population it will provide as a more cheaper availability of labor for a location of industry for a manufacturing of goods so labor as an important indicator third as a water regular supply of water this is as considered as a secondary secondary because water it can be as a transported towards the industrial units also through as a pipeline transportation through the pipeline transportation or either we can fetch the water from the underground surfaces underground surfaces but water has also the one of the uh, materials required for location of industries because water required in industries for a different forms in cotton textiles water used for a washing and dyeing purposes in iron and steel industries thermal power stations nuclear power stations water required for a cooling purposes cooling purposes so water is a desirable for a location of a, any of a industries in our country next as a markets if the goods are manufactured they are not selling in market how can a industrialist it can earn a profit for a profits they have to sell their product in a markets so nearness of a market the availability of a market are also impact over the they are also influence over a location of industries markets in the sense demand of a product generally as a such goods are manufactured which are demanded in a markets demanded in markets for example in a present cool weather conditions the cool waves which are striking over the northern parts of a country the subtropical regions of india these conditions are favorable for a woolen growth that's why the uh, hosiery industries of ludhiana they are producing the goods during the months of a december january february till as the february afterwards they stopped their production so these units are basically responsible for the seasonal unemployment during as a season they are hiring as a workers and during the off season they are not giving as a jobs to the workers next as a raw material raw material whatever has pr produced in industry so their unfinished material it is as a mandatory and uh, available in abundance in nearer to the industry most number of industries at present large scale industries cotton textiles sugar iron and steel such industries are located at nearer to the source of their raw material source of raw material why because the such kind of a material is a bulky and a larger in quantities such material is is not easy to transport from the far away areas far away areas cost of production garima cost of production means uh, garima set up there she set up her uh, sugar industry somewhere in uh, uttar pradesh for example rajasthan uttar pradesh anywhere if the sugar cane importing from a uh, punjab towards as a rajasthan that industry you have to use the means of transport means of transport a large quantities of a uh, money it will be as a spend on a uh, transportation of a uh, material then afterwards a good which will be which will be as a manufactured on a sugar mill of a garima it will be at a higher end rate why because the mrp of a that particular product including as a all those expenses which are spent on a purchasing of a raw material towards as the selling of a sugar in a market means the share of a wholesaler distributor the number of resources which are spent for a manufacturing of a per kg of a sugar it will be as a higher if garima transporting her sugar cane directly from a punjab haryana towards the rajasthan cost of production means a total cost which has spent on a manufacturing of a good clear 
Garima clear? So raw material, it should be as a, available in a nearer to the source of an industry. So such industries are preferably used for a production. But some industries are there which require the material in a smaller in quantities and light in weight. For example, the pharmaceuticals, medicines, pharmaceuticals or medicines. Such kind of industries are known as footloose industries. Footloose industries. Those industries which can be located at anywhere which are not influencing by the locational factors are known as a footloose industries. Foot loose industries. Why? Because the type of a raw material is a light in weight and smaller in quantities. Smaller in quantities. They are known as a foot loose industries. Next, power. In present day, in uh, under the modernization, most number of industries are running on a modified technology, modern technology. Such technology needs as a regular supply of water for running of machines. For functioning of machines, power supply, regular supply of power desirable for a location of a industry, for a running of a machines. So for which most number of industries, they choose that site where coal available or nearest to the, that particular industry. Coal is generally used as a source of energy source of energy in a thermal power stations. So same as they use as a coal as a source of a electricity. So that's why as the industries are located in such areas where coal available as near to the production sites, nearest to the production sites. But some industries are also located nearer to the dams also, through which the, as the regular supply of a water, so regular supply of electricity, impact over a growth of industry, the location of industry. Clear? Next are the means of transport. Means of transport, those industries, those sites are opted by the industrialists as the favorable for location of industries where the means of transport are properly developed. Means of transport are properly developed. The railways, roadways developed in a, those areas. Such conditions are favorable to which as they can easily import the material. They can import as the raw material from a production sites towards the industries as easily. Raw material from a production sites towards the industry to the means of transport and afterwards some manufactured goods. These can easily move towards as a markets. Move towards the markets. For example, the more, most number of the goods exporting from India towards the other countries to the ports. Mumbai port, Kandla port of Gujarat, Mangalore of Karnataka, then Chennai, Vishakhapatnam, Calcutta port. Uh, these ports are generally used for export of materials towards as a Southeastern Asian countries and European countries. So these ports are well connected with the means of transport with industries to which a larger quantities of a material can easily export it towards the other countries of the world. Clear? And last as a climatic conditions, climate of an area. Different industries require as a different forms of a climatic conditions. Cotton textiles require as a humid weather conditions. Humid weather conditions. Cotton textiles require the humid weather conditions in a moist weather conditions, humid weather conditions, the thread, it becomes as a more stronger. For a strengthening of a thread, it is as a desirable as moist weather conditions. Some industrialists, they can be as a managed as a artificially to make as a moist weather conditions, but it will increase cost of production. Those expenses, it which will be as a spend over a, which will be spend over a, such kind of artificial conditions for making of a humid weather conditions. So that kind of a cloth, it will be the expensive because the industry is spending as a more money on a technology. But favorable conditions for a such humid, moist weather conditions are coastal regions. That's why most number of a cotton textiles are located in a Bombay, 
adjoining parts of Bombay, Maharashtra, and Gujarat. In Gujarat, Vadodara, Ahmedabad, uh, Rajpipla, then Raikut, Rajkut, such places are known for a location of the cotton textiles because of a nearness of a water body makes as the humid weather conditions, which are most favorable for a location of a cotton textiles. But as their opposite, iron and steel industries require as a hot and a dry weather conditions. That's why as the most number of iron and steel industries located in a central parts of a country, central parts of a country in a southeastern regions of a Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Odisha. Jharkhand, Chhattisgarh and Odisha, which are lies in the leeward sides of Eastern Ghats. Leeward sides of Eastern Ghats supported for the location of iron and steel industries. Why? Because when water, when iron comes in a contact of a water, it rusted. That's why the iron and steel industries are located on a drier conditions, hot and dry weather conditions. Clear? So climate is also the influencing over the location of industries. Yes, Ashin, ports too as a ports, India exporting their materials towards as the Southeastern Asian countries. India exported their materials towards the Southeastern Asian countries to the Vishakhapatnam, Calcutta, Puducherry, and Chennai ports towards as the Gulf countries and Europe. <laughs> Gulf countries and Europe, Kandla, Mumbai, Mangalore, Kochi, such ports are preferably used for it. So these ports are well connected with the means of railways and roadways through which India exporting their manufacture goods towards the other countries of the world. Clear? So these are the geographical factors. Next are the non-geographical. All these are associated with the land areas, surface areas. People prefer to live in a plain areas, neither in a mountainous regions. That's why as a larger population where it will be as a available, larger, cheaper labor available in such areas as a industries are located. Look, it has correlated with the geographical land with the geographical water availability over a, I told you as earlier, water as a secondary factor affecting as a location of industry. It can be as a complete to the other means also. But the markets, markets are developing such areas where the population is living in a larger in number, larger in number. Power supply, regular supply of power, it can be as a transmit towards as an industry to the industry to the uh, electrical wires. But industries, they preferably as located to develop their own sources of a power to availability of coal. Means of transport are more developed in a plains comparatively a mountain center plateaus. Climate of a climate has basically as influence in a leveled areas as moderate. But when we moving the upward direction, temperature decreases. So all these are correlated with the geography of the surface, the land areas. Others are the non-geographical, which not related with the, which are not related with the geographical factors as capital investment. In industries, capital require in a larger quantities for production. That capital capital requires to pay the salaries to laborers to the workers, salaries to the workers for which as a capital required for a location of an industry, purchasing of a technology, machinery, purchasing of a raw material. So for which as a capital required in a larger quantities. So capital investment is a desirable for which as a banks, it should be as a lending a money, giving a credit to the industries to which they can locate as their industries. In such areas where the credit facilities are more available, such areas are choose by the industries for a location of industries as non-geographical. Next are the governmental policies. Last as the government policies. Government, it should be as a supportive for the location of industries. Location of industries. In 1990s, India opted as a policy of a liberalization liberalization government of india liberalized their policies in which they prefer government prefer to improve the to improve the production in a industrial sector improve production in a industrial sector for which as a number of the relaxations given to the 
relaxations given to the industries by the governments. To this, the Punjab, Punjab government preferring to the foreigners, they have to invest their money in a Punjab economy. That state Punjab, which is as a prosperous due to its agriculture resources, now moving towards the industrial units also. Industrial units. There is a vast scope of industrial units in uh, parts of a Punjab, especially as agro-based industries. Industries which are obtaining as a raw material from a raw material from a agricultural sector. Clear? So government's liberalized policies attract the investors to invest their money in a industrial sector to which a people they will getting as a jobs and improving their living standard. So these are the locational factors which are as improving, which are uh, affecting the location of any of industries. Keeping in mind of all these factors, the most appropriate and a profitable site is selected. Industrialization of any area initiates the urbanization and subsequent modernization. Infrastructural facilities like means of transport, better health institutes, educational facilities where these are available, population prefer to live in a such areas. Sub regular supply of uh, water and power, efficient banking and credit facilities, good network of uh, transport, all these are initiates the location of uh, industries. Industrialization attracts labor force. An area becomes the hub of the activities generating the diverse employment developing service sectors. In short, we can say as a center transforms into a towns or a city. This example, if we move the 40 years back towards the Nakoda, 40 years earlier, Nakoda, it was as a smaller area, surface area, which was not inhabited by the larger number of people. Nakoda, Adampur, when we're talking about the Adampur, Guraya, it's on a Jalandar, Ludhiana highway, such kind of uh, areas, these were the less developed. In a passage of time, due to influence of a Jalandar, which is known for the sports industries, under influence of a Jalandar, such kind of a, <coughs> sorry, such areas, they becomes as a more developed. Now these areas, these smaller settlements now becomes as a towns and a cities at present. Industrialization helps in removing the regional disparities and poverty by providing the jobs to the people. Our policy should be as a diffuse the industrialization to the different parts in non-industrial area. One example is there, during as a colonial period, when we are talking about the British history, at that time, the three concepts were the evolved, de-industrialization in which as a, when Britishers came to India in around the 17th century, 17th, 18th century, they came for the purpose of a purchasing of a raw material. Due to the export of a raw material from India towards the Europe, towards the England, there was as a shortage of a raw material. Due to as a shortage of a raw material, local industries, they were unable to produce the goods. Unable to produce the goods, which leads to the stop their production. Small scale units in India, they stopped their production in our country. Stopped their production in our country. This was as a de-industrialization. But afterwards, when we reaching towards as a mid of the 19th century, 1850s, newer industries, just, uh, sm some of the small scale industries set up by the Britishers in India to, uh, to transform the raw material into the items and such items exported towards England for a manufacturing of a finished goods. Afterwards, such goods sold in Indian markets at high rates, re-industrialization. They set up as a small scale units in India. For example, spinning work done in India. After gaining and spinning, yarn it was as a sent towards the England and after use of a such thread, they manufacture the clothes. Afterwards, a such clothes sold in Indian markets. Clothes sold in Indian markets. Unfinished materials from India, these were the exported towards the England and again imported towards India for a selling purposes. Selling purposes. This was as a re-industrialization. 
but in later in say in the beginning of the 20th century britishers started to set up as a large scale industry like as a tesco in a 1907 tata iron steel company in a 1907 this was as an example of a <coughs> industrialization industrialization so in a policy of industrialization to a different parts uh, which are considered as a which earlier as a considered as a non industrial areas now as comes under the industrial regions earlier the industrial development had colonial character industrial development took place in areas of a kolkata mumbai delhi and chennai only these cities were developed by the britishers britishers at that time these were known as a what we call to them 27 roll number 90 raise your hand 27 roll number 27 is there 18 roll number 18 roll number 90 27 I think it's a Kushi. Very good. Yes, Kushi. Can you tell me during as a British age, Bombay, Calcutta, Madras, and Delhi, these cities were developed by the Britishers and known as a at that time that these cities were known as a. Yes, Kushi. What the Britishers called to the them? Port cities. Sorry, Delhi is a port city. Delhi is a port city, really? No, sir. Then answer. No, sir. Very good, Dhavnesh. Given the correct answer, presidencies. So presidencies. Yes, these were these cities were known as a presidencies, which were developed by the Britishers to satisfy their need of a trade, their need of trade development. At the early phase of our colonial growth, they developed as the Calcutta, Madras, Bombay, and Delhi as their presidencies. where as the first industries these were located by the britishers delhi it was known for their industrial units as well as for their political importance could you want to ask something yes kushi okay so during as a industrialization during industry yes bolie it during industrialization and the urbanization the industrialization and the urbanization they go hand in hand mostly as a industries where the industries which are located in a cities they mix as a more development of a city and those cities which are as a growing they are attracting the more industries towards it towards it as the delhi more population living in a delhi which is supportive for the growth of the two industrial towns nearer to it as a noida and gurgaon noida and gurgaon so industry industries and uh, cities they are go hand in hand with the growth of a cities cities provide as a ready markets and infrastructural facilities other industries take as a advantage of a existing facility and get established such cities are referred to as the urban economies urban economies or agglomeration economies urban economies or agglomeration economies those economies which are developed under influence of a under influence of a larger cities those cities which are developed under influence of a larger industries larger cities one example is a best example in hoshiarpur as the sonalika tractors are there sonalika tractors only those students they have to raise their hand you know it sonalika sunai nahi kabhi so sonalika tractors in a hoshiarpur that unit is known for the assemblage of a material wa saman assemble kiya jata hai tractor banaya jata hai they are neither manufactured the goods they assembled the materials डिफरेंट एरिया से सामान लाया जाता है सोनालिका इंडस्ट्री के अंदर असेंबल करके ट्रैक्टर को मार्केट में बेचा जाता है दिस इज एज अर्पज ऑफ सोनालिका ट्रैक्टर्स इंडस्ट्रीज सो फॉर विच एज वन स्मॉल स्केल इंडस्ट्री एज अ डिवेलप एज देयर एडजॉइनिंग इन अगवाड़ा दैट नेम इज अ जी एन ए 
G and A. Roll number 30. Raise your hand. 30 roll number is there. 30 roll number. 31. 30, 31. 32. Yes, 31 is there. Yes, Nana, can you tell me? GNA in Fagwada, known for a manufacturing of a which material? Who asked any pitch? I think 28 years here production current. Nana? GNA. Uh, manufacturing of. Sorry? Manufacturing of? Manufacturing uh, parts of uh, vehicles. No. Which part? Something as a preferably produced in a GNA. Yes, Mishti, your answer. Mishti, raise your hand. 30 roll number. Rahul also. Prabnur also, raise your hand. Prabnur. Prabnur, raise your hand. Rahul. They are manufacturing as a excels. Excels and a shockers, which are used in a vehicles. So materials imported from the different areas, these are assembled in a large scale industries. Such economies, large scale industries are influenced over a small scale industries through which as they are also developing. Ford ka apne naam suna hai. Ford is located in a California. They are neither manufactured the materials, they are assembled the materials, such uh, machine parts which are imported from the different countries. Ford is an example of a multinational company. Clear? 